But we're being, you know, like, oh man, are we even going to be that thing? Try to grab a Bible, grab a Bible, grab a Bible. Amen. All right, tonight, 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 we got an interesting title called World War III, The War for the Mind. World War III, The War for the Mind. Turn with me to Romans 1 and 22, the book of Romans 1 and 22. The book of Romans 1 and 22. The book of Romans. One and twenty-two. If you guys say amen, you ain't got to say hold up. I ain't got it yet. The book of Romans, one and twenty-two. And put on my readers. Last two, you guys couldn't see that. All right, Romans one and twenty-two. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Never get wise in your own eyes. Never get so smart that you don't think you need God. Never get so smart that you think just because you got a job, or you got money, or you got a house, or you got status, that you don't need God. Uh, yesterday I watched a, a TV special about Suge Knight and Death Row Records. Suge Knight had amassed over $300 million. He had enough money to change not only his community, the whole community of Compton. Yet today he's in prison and broke. Because what we often do is we assume money is God. We assume that status is God. We assume that a, a, a degree might be God. And we get so smart that we think we don't know God, that we don't need God. And the Bible said never get wise in your own eyes. Never get so wise that you think you don't need God anymore. And I have friends that got PhDs. I got friends that are doctors. I got friends that got all kinds of statuses. I even have some friends that are millionaires. And if you ever get to a point to where you say, oh, I don't need God anymore, God says he's going to turn you into a fool. You don't want God to turn you into a fool. You don't want God to, to make your life look foolish. Because if you get so smart that you don't need him, he will turn you into a fool. And he will turn you into a fool so much so that everybody will look at you and laugh. And you don't want people to look at you and laugh because you, you made yourself a god. And, and here's what some people say. They say this. They say that the universe is God. The universe is God. Raise your hand if you heard that the universe is God. You heard people say, oh, the, the universe gave me a car, or the universe gave me a job, or the universe has healed me, or, or the universe has gave me this. Some people say that the universe is God. Let's see what the Bible says. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17 is going to go down to verse 3. Deuteronomy 17, go down to verse 3. And my father, the Bible says, And he hath gone and served other gods. And he worshiped them. He worshiped the sun, some worshiped the moon, and some even worshiped the stars that are in heaven. And God says, I have not commanded this to be so. Uh, my brother says this, And he hath gone and served other gods, and hath worshiped them. Some worship the sun, some worship the moon, some even worship the star. And God says, I have not commanded it to be so. Some people get so smart, they say, I'm going to worship the God of my ancestors. Uh, I'm going to worship the God of uh, 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 God. Jesus is a white man, so I'm going to worship the God of the black man. I, 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 one of my church members is doing that right now. He, he turned his back. He said, I'm going to follow the black guy because the white guy enslaved me. And the Bible says there's only one God. And the universe is not God. Anybody ever tell you that the universe is God? He's, he's lying. He's following the tribe of Satan. Because if you start worshiping a star or the moon or anything else besides God, Jesus Christ, the Bible says you will be cursed. And you don't want to be cursed. You don't want to be cursed. Matter of fact, some people are led, led away by uh, spiritual gurus. 
TED Talk. Uh, some people are led away by uh, something called yoga. I know yoga's got some people. Yes, sir. Zodiac sign. You don't worship a zodiac sign. So, for example, I, I was born in November. I'm a Scorpio. I don't worship the, the deity of Scorpio. I was just born in November. But if I was going around saying Scorpio, 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 then something would be wrong with me. But I was just born under that zodiac sign. I am born under Scorpio. I don't worship the constellation called Scorpio. However, there are some people that do. They're called astrologists or horoscope people. And they do worship the astrological signs. And that is a sin because that's worshiping stars. So I, I was born underneath uh, the, the astrological horoscope sign of Scorpio, but I'm not, I don't worship none of that because that would be blasphemy against God. That's a good question. So the point is, never worship anything outside of God. Yoga is an interesting exercise. And you do all these different poses and all these different things, but some people are led away from God because of yoga. What you do not know that yoga is a Hindu religion and that each pose is a different position to a different God. And I know people who've been led away from God because they start doing their yoga and they start doing their different poses and next thing you know, they start chanting and they don't even know what they say. And you go press, you pray, pray to some God, you don't even know about You start saying all these weird words not realizing you speak it to demons. You don't realize you're speaking to a demon. But uh, 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 it's just my yoga class. It's just exercise. It's just stretching. You ain't got to make no noise to stretch. Just stretch. You ain't got to make no noise to stretch. Just stretch your body out. But when you start going, hey, yeah, 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 and you start doing all this crazy stuff, you don't even know what you're saying. But what you don't realize, each position is a different pose to a different Hindu God. And they have a million gods. So you have to realize, you have to be careful with the things that you're doing. Don't get led away from Christ following somebody just because they speak fancy words. Because Satan is clever. Satan is, is tricky. And he will have you commit spiritual homicide. If it ain't about Jesus, it ain't about God. If Jesus ain't that, the head of it, it ain't about God. If Jesus is not involved in it, it's not about God. Don't you get tricked by somebody because you mad at this, Black Lives Matter, and hey, we're, we're going to follow the religion of our ancestors. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to do all this. Because if you do, you're going to get led away from God. And what's crazy is, this life is about going to heaven. Everybody want to go to heaven. I, I don't know anybody saying, I want to go to hell. Everybody want to go to heaven. But in order to get to heaven, you got to get through the gate that Jesus opened. And in order to get through his gate, you got to follow what he said. Because if you say, I follow the God of Hanyan, he's going to be like, well, you go over with Hanyan and go right to hell with him. Because if you come to heaven, you got to follow the God of Jesus Christ. You can't follow the God of, of, of Islam. You can't follow the God of Hindu. You can't follow the God of Shintu. There's only one God with one gate, with one key to open the gate for eternity. And the crazy thing is, I do zero. I have done one in about a year, but I do zero. And when you're standing over that body, it's real. It's real at that point in time. When the mother and father is crying, when everybody is crying, they say, stay up in heaven now. They got their wings now. I don't lie. And I remember an old pastor, he was like, Mike, don't you ever start lying to these people to make them feel better about who somebody has had. He said, you tell the truth. Because if you start lying to them, they're going to think that they can live the same way and the same thing will happen to them. The thing is, it has to be about Jesus. It has to be about Christ. Matter of fact, turn with me to Romans 8.35. Romans 8.35. Romans 8 35. Don't you get followed away, led away from Christ with no ideology and some fancy TED talk or some guru from Hollywood or some guy that says he knows something. He's a liar of his hell. If it ain't about Jesus, it ain't about Christ. It ain't about God. Romans 8 35. Romans 8 35. Romans 8 35. There's a phrase going around now since COVID started called be safe. Matter of fact, every time somebody leaves my car now, be safe. And every time I say hi to somebody, I say bye, be safe. And what's crazy is, these people ain't never said be safe to me before. 
But now be saved is the new code word for COVID. Amen. Be saved. All right. Romans 8, 35. Romans 8, 35. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness, shall peril, or shall the sword, or gun? It says nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. So the thing is, we're walking around now, and we're saying, be safe. Be safe. Be safe. I, I rode a motorcycle since 1988, and I've had three, four motorcycle accidents. Here's the point. Uh, every, every time I get on my bike, somebody would say, be safe. And I would go, thank you. But it started to irritate me after a while. Because what they were saying is that I'm trying to kill myself. So every time I get on the bike, be safe. Be safe. And I would go, thanks. But it would vex me because I knew what they were saying is that you're doing something that can kill you. And they're saying, I, I really don't agree with what you're doing because it can kill you. So the thing is, they're telling me, uh, essentially, uh, uh, that's dangerous. Be safe. Here's the thing about life. You cannot be saved. You want to know why you can't be saved? Because you cannot save your own life. I, I, I know somebody that committed suicide. I know somebody that tried to commit suicide too. They shot themselves in the head and they live. Now they live as a vegetable, but they still alive. I know somebody that jumped off the top of a building and broke every bone in his body, but he's still alive. He tried to kill himself and it didn't work out. So the thing is, you don't have control over your life. The life that you have, God tells you when you're going to be born, and God tells you when you're going to die. Well, well, I see you exercising at the beach. Glad you said that. The body says in 1 Timothy 5 and 8, bodily exercise profited a little. What that means is, it's good to work out. It's okay. But then it says, godliness is good for everything. It's good that I go to the beach and I ride my bicycle and I work out. But if I ain't connected to God, it don't mean a thing. It's good that I can eat healthy and eat a better diet. But if I'm not connected to God, it don't mean a thing. I know a few vegetarians that died at 27. I know a few people who, who gave up meat who, who died at 35. I know a few girls who, who gave up certain things who died in their 40s. The thing is, you can't save your life. The only thing you can do is give it to God. Because God already determined the day that you're going to be born and the day that you're going to die. It's in Job 14.5. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn to it real quick. Job 14.5. Job 14.5. Job 14.5. Go to Psalm, take a left. Job 14.5. No, 14.5. And it says, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast appointed his bound that he cannot pass. That reads from the Living Bible Translation. You have set mankind so brief a lifespan. All his months and all his years are already pre-written. Every day that you live, God already wrote it out. You won't get no more time. That's why it's dangerous in this COVID thing that, you know, people ain't going to school, they ain't doing that, because you're wasting time. We've been in this COVID thing now five, six months. Some of y'all thought five, six months. Imagine a, a guy telling you this, you got 10 minutes to live. You're like, what? I got 10 minutes left. You got 10 minutes, and then you think, I just wasted six months. You don't get no more time. I thought the richest man, Steve Jobs died with $64 billion in the bank. You don't get more time. So use the time that God has given you. Don't let Satan trick you out of your time. Don't let Satan trick you out of your time. Don't let Satan trick you out of your time. Matter of fact, turn with me to Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. This is my old bishop's favorite passage. And it says, And be not conformed to this world, but the in that. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. 
be and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right. So it says here, we cannot think like the world. We cannot think like the world. I brought this little mask. This is, now, this is the mask that you see on TV. This is the mask. This is the mask that they tell you can save your life. This mask. What's interesting is I've been alive for 50 years without this man. <laughs> I've been shot at in jails with all kind of crazy situations without this man. I've been in all kind of crazy life situations and I didn't have a mask on. But this year, they tell me that this will save my life. Now, what's powerful is I'm 50. So since I'm 50, here's some things that I lived through. Here's some things that I lived through without a mask. I, I survived something called the measles without a mask. I survived chicken pox without a mask. I survived Ebola without a mask. I survived H1N1 without a mask. I survived the whooping cough without a mask. I survived TB without a mask. But this year, they tell me that this is the key to my life. So what, you got people walking around. Matter of fact, we, was, we were riding bikes yesterday, and long story short, uh, Joseph, he was watching, hey son, he was, we was riding bicycle, and, and the lady stopped him and said, where's your mask? And yelled at him, where's your mask? And he was like, what? Where's your mask? Because we believe that this can change your life. Now, what's different, I have friends who are doctors, and, and some of them are watching. Unfortunately, this mask only it don't even protect any of your face. It goes over your face. But oxygen can come in on the side, it come in all around it. If you went underwater with this mask on, you would get water all in your mouth. It don't really stop nothing. It's really something called placebo effect. Does anybody know the word placebo? Okay, here's what placebo is. Uh, when I was in college, I was broke. I've been working since I was 14. Long story short, I had to have a job. We were test, uh, we, were, we were called guinea pigs. We were in the laboratory around the corner from UC Irvine. And our job was, they would give us a pill, and then they would say, how do you feel? Now, some of the pills that they gave us were real, and some of the pills that they gave us was fake. And what they would do was, was record what would happen when you gave somebody a fake pill and you gave somebody a real pill. What they found that what happened was, sometimes when you gave people a fake pill, they still said, ooh, I feel better. Because it's all in your mind. Let's, let's fast forward to 2020. What Satan wants from you now is to control your mind. This is the biggest battle of your lifetime. This is the biggest battle of the last 50 years. Because what Satan wants to do now is, he wants to control your mind. Because if he can control your mind, the body will follow. He will, the Bible follow. You have to get strong now in the mind. The Bible says, look back to Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says, be not conformed to this world. So you should not think the same way that the world thinks. There should be something different about you than, than, than the world. If you are acting just like the world, if God came back, who is he going to think? They like, oh, y'all are the same. The thing is, as a Christian, as a disciple, as somebody that believes in Jesus Christ, you have to think and act differently than the world. Because God gave you something called faith. And what faith says is this. I'm not going to trust in a man to save my life. But I will take some vitamins. I will take some vitamin C. I will take some of this because this is in the Bible. The mask is not in the Bible, but God says, your food shall be your medicine. And then what's so interesting about this whole epidemic, why are they teaching you guys how to be healthy? If there's a flu virus going around and it's killing 6% of the people, why are they telling you how to strengthen your immune system? Because that's the only thing that's going to save you. It's funny. I have one of my friends who got tested. She's watching right now. She went and got tested. And she called me. And she was like, H, that's what you got. H, I, I'm going to get tested. You know what I said? For what? Uh, I, I, I got a cold. I want to see if I got it. I said, and what if you do have it? Well, well, if I get tested, then I know I have it. 
God says, Bill, what can you do? And then she says, nothing. I said, can they heal you? No. Can they treat you? No. So why do you want to know you have it? Well, I just need to know I have it. Because if you know you have it, guess what you're going to start to do? Work. You're going to start to stretch yourself out. It's like Easy E died of AIDS. And I remember when Easy E died of AIDS, this was 1991, uh, it shocked everybody. That, that, that would be equivalent to y'all Drake dying today of AIDS. Imagine if Drake died of AIDS. So that was what happened. Easy E, the founder of Gangster Rap, died of AIDS. We were like, what the? Oh my God. I was 21 years old. And I was like, oh my God. Every brother was scared. I promise you, I didn't have sex for like a month. I was like, oh no, AIDS is killing kill it, brother. We all gonna drop dead. Now here's what's funny. A group of my friends, we were like this. They were like, dog. I was like, yeah. He was like, man, I ain't getting tested. He said, if I got AIDS, I'm just gonna be walking there, drop dead. He said, I don't even wanna know. And none of my friends ever got tested. Because we were saying, why would we wanna get tested for something that they don't have a cure for? Because all it's going to do, Bishop, go ahead. So, uh, so you don't spread it. Exactly. Oh, he said, so you don't spread it. Uh, <laughs> all right. I ain't going to argue that one. I ain't going to argue that one. That's a good point. Good point. Uh, 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 this should be out of my way. Speaking out of All right. So the point is, that's a good point. But in reality, that's not what happens. Because me and the guy who did get it continued to do what they were doing. But the point was, we said this in jest because we knew that there's no cure for it. And that the only thing that it could really do is stress us out. Do you know that stress will kill you faster than anything else? You guys are young and healthy. But stress is a great killer. Uh, a lot of people get sick not because of their immune system, because they stress out. What does stress look like? Uh, the rich do. You lost your job. Your car knows do. Your cell phone do. And you have no money. That's called stress. Some of you, uh, uh, the weed shops are busy. Some of y'all is in the weed ministry heavy. You know why people smoke so much weed? Stress. They even got a weed strand called stress. Because people smoke so much because they got something going on in their life that they can't handle it. So let me get. Ah, <laughs> Everything's funny now. You just want to get back and laugh. I, oh, I got the munchies. I'm going to eat now. My stress is gone. But the point is, after you come down from your high, you still got the same problem. And that's what happens to a lot of us. I, I know people that drink profusely. But after you get faded and, and you ain't drunk no more, you still got the same problem. But the thing is, if you get with God, he can give you some answers to your problem. If you get with God, he can give you some answers to your problem. Matter of fact, uh, turn with me to Deuteronomy 10 17. We're almost done. Deuteronomy 10 and 17. Deuteronomy 10 and 17. Deuteronomy 10 and 17. It says, For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords. A great God, a mighty God, and a terrible God, with regard is not person, nor taking reward. God is a God of God. He's the great protector. If God is your God, he can protect you through anything. Uh, I always tell you this story. I had a motorcycle accident that I was doing, you saw the boots in the garage. I was doing 90 miles per hour in the rain, and somebody cut me off. So I, I had a, I thought, I promise you, I said, I said this to myself, I said, Ooh, I guess this is it. I literally said that. I said, this, I'm doing 90 miles per hour. I've heard this story about 20 times. I'm doing 90 miles per hour. And I said, this is it. I threw the bike down on the ground. The bike slid and hit the car and split to pieces. I slid 300 yards and stopped right in front of the car. Now, Here's the thing, if I was going on me and in my own person, I'm a dead man. But when God is your protector, when God is your source, when God is the ruler of your life, he will call angels to go down and they will protect you. That's the power that you have of God. 
That's why you need to have a real relationship with God. Because if God is not your protector, then you a dead man. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It don't matter your position. If God is not your leader, then you have nothing. And God saved me. And I got up, and the Bible was literally in pieces. And I said, nothing but the grace of God. That's the power you have. That's why I'm not walking around here afraid of no COVID, no corona, ain't worried about none of that. If, if I can survive getting shot at a few times, if I can survive growing up in the neighborhood and, and not getting killed, if I can survive going to prison, or sorry, going to jail six times, then I ain't worried about no COVID because I know God is my source. You need that relationship with God. And the problem with a lot of us is we really don't know God. We really don't know God. And then turn with me. Turn with me to Matthew. Matthew 6 and 21. Matthew 6 and 21. Matthew 6 and 21. Give me a... What's holding that to you? Matthew 6 and 21. Matthew 6 and 21. Matthew 6. Matthew 6 and 21 says this. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Uh-oh. I can get ugly right now. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let me translate that. I trust God with everything except my money. Uh oh. I trust God with everything except my money. You don't want to be a Christian and trust God with everything except your money. Because if you trust God with everything except your money, Satan's going to attack your money. And the problem is, if Satan come after your money, now he can bring you down and drag you down. So what does that mean for us? A lot of us are in that position. Uh, you have a job and you, you get paid a, a, a hundred dollars and you say, you want ten dollars? You can even go to work. I went to work. I earned this money. I did this. I did that. And what so, starts to happen is, God sees your weak faith. And he sees the fact that you trust your job more than you trust him. So what will he do in some instances? In some instances, he'll get you laid off. In some instances, he'll get somebody else promoted over you. In some instances, he'll have your life go off. He'll have crazy stuff happen. You have a crazy car accident. You end up sick. All kinds of crazy things happen. Because when you say that my job is my source, you're saying that God is not that his force. Man, you just saying that because you want our money. I don't need your money. God sent me $30,000 or something. I'm good. You ain't got to worry about me. So the point is, when you put God first, God will take care of your business. The problem with us is, we want to put our job first. I didn't believe that. When I first met my wife, she was always the type. When I first met her, I made $21 an hour. She made $12 an hour. Uh, and as time progressed, she always had more money than me. And she used to go to church, and you heard this story, and she would always pay her top. Always, ever since I know, we've been together 24 years, she's always paid her top. She's never missed a Sunday paying her top, all the time. And she always had more money than me. And I, I wasn't saved when we first got together. I'd be like, why are you giving your money to that church? That's so stupid. Why are you giving the money to him? I got saved in 2002. But when I first got saved, I didn't tithe either. I'd be like, $5, here's $5, dollars he get $3. Got $100 in my pocket, here's $3, walk out the door. I even had the nerve one time to put a dollar in there and walk out the door. And one day the pastor was preaching, he says, why don't you trust God? And it hit me. So I put $100 in there. He never put that much money in there. Put $100, I was like this. Mm -hmm. uh, dropped it, walked off. Hot. I was hot. Dropped that honey. Walked off. I was talking trash under my bed. No less than three hours later, I got $500. I said, what the heck? I said, this is crazy. When you trust God, you can't beat God giving. And I learned that. And ever since I learned that principle of tithing, God has blessed and blessed, not only blessed me, blessed my family, blessed the children, blessed my job, blessed me all over the place. Yeah, yeah, I've had some struggles. 
I've had some months where the bank accounts was low, but God always got me out. You want that connection with God. Matter of fact, turn me to Luke 16, 15. 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 Luke 16, 15 says this. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. We'll translate that. But God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Let me read it from the Living Bible translation. You wear a no noble, pious expression in the public, but God knows your evil heart. Your pretense brings you honor with people, but you are abomination in the sight of God. All right, let's translate that. You can't be faith with God. You can't be faith with God. You can be faith with other people. You can't be faith with God. And so when you really understand that, God knows you. He knows all your secrets. He knows all the crazy stuff that you into. He knows your crazy habits. He knows you. So some people like to show in front in front of other people. Because they try to act like they ain't what they is. I had to apologize to a friend tonight before I came here. Because I was like, wow, he probably think I'm a certain way. I ain't no hypocrite. I tell you, boy, I love women, I love strip clubs, and you can catch me in some crazy places. But I love God. So I ain't gonna never stand up here in front like, I'm perfect, I'm a perfect Christian, I'm the pastor, God bless you, please bless you. I ain't never gonna stand up here. I'm trying to get to heaven just like y'all did, boy. I, ooh, I, if you look on my phone, you might see something like, oh my God, you dad, what's wrong with you? But the point is, God know me. I don't front for God. So the thing is, you got to be real with him. You got to be real with God. How do you become real with God? I'm glad you asked that question. Turn with me to Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 4. How do you get real with God? How do you get real with God? Turn to Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 4. The Bible says this, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What does that mean? You got to read your Bible, people. God is not going to tap you on the shoulder and be like, Hey, Deonny, how you doing? Matter of fact, the Bible says if God ever talks to you, you die. He is never going to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, Zion, you looking good today. God don't speak that way. What happens is this. When you read your Bible, then he speaks to your soul. And he speaks to your spirit. If you ain't read your Bible, he ain't talking to you. When you read your Bible, he speaks to you. If you ain't read your Bible, he ain't got nothing to say to you. When you come to church, he speaks to you a little bit. But the thing is, you got to know God for yourself. You got to develop a relationship with him. Here's how you treat God. Some of y'all got a girlfriend and boyfriend. Treat God the same way. Some of y'all, none of y'all got kids yet. If you had a kid, treat God the same way. If, if you love your mommy and daddy, treat God the same way. You have to spend time with God. You have to spend time with God. Uh, imagine you had a boyfriend and he never called you. And then here, once a, once a month you get a call and the call says, Hey, I need some money. He's like, what? Hold on. I ain't heard from you all month. And the first time you call me, you need something? Yeah, can you help me out? Uh, I know some people that call every day. When, when I see that number, I'm like, dang, they need something. Because I don't hear from them no other time. Every time I hear from them, they beg it was up. Man, this happened. They got a nice story. Man, I couldn't pay my bills. And you like, okay. And I just said, write the voicemail. Write the voicemail. Write the voicemail. You don't want God to send you the voicemail when you call him because he don't know you. You want God to know you so much that when you need something, you ain't got to ask. He going to be like, that's my boy, Jaheen. I got it. Jaheen was Jaheen praying on something. He ain't got to say nothing. God just sent it to him because that's his boy. You want a relationship with God so that you're close. Matter of fact, turn with me to John 15 and 15. John 15 and 15. You want God to know you. And the problem with a lot of Christians is they don't know God. 
They say they do, but they don't know God. That's why I understand why they stay home in COVID. I'm like, you know God and you stay home? What kind of God do you know? Because we must know a different God. Because my God ain't told me none of that. John 15 and 15. John 15 and 15. John 15 and 15. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. God got to a point to where he started calling his disciples his friends. I call Deep my friend. I call Minister Eric my friend. Jamel my friend. The Bishop my friend. I call Brian my friend. I know y'all. We friends. I love y'all. We friends. Y'all my church members, but I love you. I love Trey. I, I love Omega. I love y'all because we're friends. You can't be my friend, and I don't know you. You want that kind of relationship with God. I'm not special. I might be a little special ed. I'm not special. The way that I got close to God is reading the Bible. I didn't get saved going to church. I got saved reading the Bible. Because when I read that Bible, I found out, wow, I can still be a Christian and be a pastor with my sins while God is still going to love me with the stuff that I like to do, God really is going to still love me because I thought that God wouldn't love me because I went to the old church and they was like, you a sinner, you're going to hell, you're going to fornicate, you're going to adulterer. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to hell. But when I read this Bible, God says this. He says, my grace is sufficient. What does that mean? It means this. Regardless of what you're into, if you put God first and you serve God, he'll bless you anyway. Because it's about relationship. I have a best friend. And my best friend, sometimes he lets me down. But guess what? He's still my best friend. And I love him anyway. You want to be that close to God that he loves you, even though you mess up sometimes. He'll say, Trey, I love you, man. It's all good. He say, he say Isaiah, I love you anyway. He say, Ezekiel, I love you anyway. You want to be close to God. So even when, did I get it right? Did I get it right? Elijah. What? Elijah. Elijah. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there working on it. But the point is, you want to be that close to God where y'all have that kind of relationship. And the last thing. And the last thing. And the last thing. Turn with me to Mal uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Way in front. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says this. It says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to gain wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is to this day. Without God, you can do nothing. Let me say that again. Without God, you can do you can't do anything. You can do something, but that what you do, that is something will amount to nothing. Let me say that again. Without God, you can't do anything. But the thing that you do without God will amount to nothing. What does that look like? If God is not reigning in your life, even though you have a million dollars it still won't be nothing. Because the thing is, if God is not in it, it won't prosper. It won't benefit anything. It's sad that uh, some people, and y'all know these little rap hippers, hip hoppers, and all these pop smoke, and all these smoke smoke, and take on 69 and all these little people that y'all call hip hop superstars. They get all this money, and they don't find happiness. They get all this wealth, and they don't find happiness. Yeah, they get women. They got all the drugs. They got all the cars. And they still depressed. And they were like, wow, I thought this thing would take it away. I thought once I got money, I would feel different. I thought once I got the shine, I would be different. The only thing money's gonna give you is more stuff. That's it. Money just means more stuff. But what God can give you is Joy. When I'm riding that little bicycle on the beach, I'm like a four-year-old kid. <laughs> I'm riding, matter of fact, I'm going to ride tomorrow. I think he's and uh, a couple others. We're going to ride tomorrow. I've got the little 
And if you think you need this, I, I promise you, I thank God every time. You think you need this, I'm talking about bicycle. I'm so happy riding my bicycle. God will give you joy. I don't need $28 million for God to give me joy. I need my health. I need my strength. And I thank God for health and strength. If you've never been, how many of you have been to the hospital before? Not visiting, I mean you were in the hospital. Amen. Imagine when you laid up on that journey, how you would think about the things you wish you could do. And it's so sad that people got help and strength, and they won't come to no church. They got help and strength, and they won't help nobody. You want God to keep you fulfilled with health, with strength, and with joy, and with joy, and with joy. And the last thing, 1 Peter 1 and 5, way in the back, 1 Peter 1 and 5. We done after this, this is the very last thing. I saw Deke look at me outside his eye. Is that the last thing or is that the last, last thing? Because you always say the last thing. You always be lying. How you going to lie to me the past? It don't make no sense. You're a liar. All right, uh, 1 Peter 1 and 5. Go down to verse 7. It says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried by fire, might be found unto praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Let me translate all that. God is going to test your faith. God is going to test your faith. You can say, I'm a Christian. And so you say I'm a Christian, all right? Satan like, oh, for real? You one of them? You from the hood? The hat go back. Oh, you from the hood? Now it's a different one. Oh, you from that hood? It's a different look now. Oh, you one of them, huh? All right. See, the thing is, once you say you a Christian, now Satan is going to test you. And he's going to test your Christianity. Oh, you one of them people? Let me see what you about. And he's going to get you with something to see how you respond. That's one of the scariest things about this COVID. Satan done called a whole lot of Christians out. They done bumped out and walked away from the whole hood. They go. I ain't with that Christian stuff. I'm gone. I'm, I'm social distancing, homie. I ain't got time for that. I'm in the house. I'm so where my mask at. I'm saved. I'm, I'm saved. They social distancing. And he like, punk. You got called out. Where you at now? Where is it at now? You talked all that mess about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Where you at now? Why you at home? Why you zooming? The church is open. Why ain't you there? You scared, homie? I don't want to make my grandmother sick. You a lie. You scared. I don't want to make my cousin sick. You ain't worried. You ain't like your cousin. You scared. See, the thing is, God will allow Satan to call you out. Because in the spirit realm, they know your name. All the demons know who you is. So they calling them, let's see who for real. You, you talked all that trash, is you really from the hood? Uh, one thing that I was watching especially yesterday, I'm going to shut up after this. I was watching especially yesterday, and it was about Tupac. And they said, uh, the guy, he's an OG from, uh, what's that, Ma, Paru. And he said, uh, no, nah, actually he was from, uh, what's that little gang down here? The one that killed him, Santana Buck. What was, what was it? Paul. Paul. And he said this, he said, uh, is Tupac from Atlanta? Is Tupac from Oakland? Is Tupac from New York? Or is Tupac from Compton? He said, where are he from? He said he got killed over here trying to bang from somebody else's hood, but really, where is he from? And then the OG said, that's why he got fucked. He said he was claiming too many hoods at the same time. The thing is, Satan gonna call you out. Where are you from? And you better represent. I know in my neighborhood, you could be from, I grew up in third, you could be from Harlem one day, and then be from A Trader on one day, and then be from Schoolyard one day. You better be from your hood. If you claim that you was a Christian, you better walk the talk. You better do what you're supposed to do. Because if not, Satan's going to call you out, and then God, and here's what he's going to do. Satan is the biggest snitch that ever lived. What that means is this. He called you out, and you punk out. Guess what he do? God. 